In this tutorial, we're going to look at the camera raw user interface and the adjustments we make to our raw files so we can process them in Photoshop. To start, we'll need to have some images selected in Adobe Bridge. I have a folder here that has some images with one star and an image with five stars. I want to open all of these in Photoshop and that will open Camera Raw so I can adju make adjustments to these raw files before they open up into Photoshop. I'm going to click on one image and then hit Command A on a Mac or Control A on a PC to select all of them. Now I can go to the file menu and scroll down to open or I can use the keyboard shortcut that's located there. On a Mac it's Command O. So on a Mac, once Adobe Photoshop and the Camera Raw apps are installed, by default, a Macintosh will always open Camera Raw files with those. On a PC, it can be slightly different. The keyboard shortcut for Open in Bridge is Control-O. Now, if you have your images selected and hit Control-O and nothing happens, you'll then have to use the shortcut to tell Bridge to open in Camera Raw. That keyboard shortcut is Control-R. By selecting all of those images, I've opened all five of them in the Camera Raw processing window. And now we'll look at the sliders on the right side of the screen and get an overview for each one. The exposure slider adjusts an image either brighter or darker. So if you take a photo in broad daylight and it is too dark, that means it was underexposed, the camera didn't get enough light, and you can increase that exposure to make it brighter or darker. For example, I can make this image brighter or darker by sliding the exposure. The exposure for this looks pretty good. The next one is contrast. As the contrast increases, that decreases the width of the tonal range of an image. And the best way to think of that is if the image was black and white and you turned it to 100% contrast, everything that was dark would be completely black and everything that was white would be completely white. Next, we have the highlights. That changes the really bright areas of an image. So you can see in the middle of this image where the person has the safety vest on, that's really bright. It's actually a little too bright. So we can drop that highlight slider down and darken that up a little bit. Shadows works on the shadow areas in an image. Whites works on the bright whites, Blacks works on the darks. So it's important to know that the shadows and highlights, it seems like they do the same thing as whites and blacks, but they do not. When you're adjusting shadows, the camera raw is looking for things where it thinks it's actually shadow and not like a black car. So if I want to increase the detail in a shadow area, I can increase the slider. That shadow part of the firefighter becomes lighter. But it didn't really affect this black in the car back here. Now if I want to make that darker, I can slide the blacks down and it will impact some of the shadow area, but it's not as much. So it's important to make a distinction between the white and black and the highlights and shadows. We also have vibrance and saturation. You can play with those and see what they do, but saturation is like kind of the intensity of the color in an image. So if I like increase the saturation, you'll see the yellow vest becomes really bright. Vibrance and saturation, both of those adjustments should be very minor. You really shouldn't go more than five to 10 on any of your images. The texture clarity and dehaze we try to stay away from and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Once we've made an adjustment to our image I want to jump back over to Bridge real quick and just show you something. So I'm actually going to hit done. And now when I activate Bridge that image that we made adjustments to now has an icon on its thumbnail. That means that Camera Raw has made some adjustments to this image and Camera Raw has actually created what's called a sidecar file. It hasn't made any changes to the raw file itself. It has created a new file that ends in XMP that contains the data for the adjustments. So the camera raw file stays untouched like a digital negative. As long as this camera raw file and that XMP file are together, anytime I open it, Photoshop will automatically detect those changes and make those adjustments. Additionally, the star ratings are stored in those sidecar XMP files. Those levels adjustments that you make in Camera Raw will also be rendered by Adobe Bridge. So to demonstrate how that uh, sidecar file is rendered by Bridge, I've got uh, I've switched to film strip mode. I've actually increased the levels and the saturation on this image to make it a little more dramatic. But if I go up and I delete the XMP file from that folder, once that uh, sidecar file goes away, the image reverts back to how it came out of camera. In this class, I want to see what adjustments you made to the camera raw files. So we'll learn how to copy both our raw files and our XMP files together with Adobe Bridge so that we can submit them to the Google Drive. And that way I can see what changes you have actually made to the images before opening them in Photoshop and saving them as JPEGs.
A great way to see how each of those sliders impacts an image when you're first starting out is to try using the auto develop feature. It's in the upper right of your window above the sliders. Just click on auto and you can see what changes it has made. Now, this one actually looks pretty good. If images are in really low light and they're dark, this auto feature will really mess your images up. If you want to undo that auto development, you can click back on the auto tab to undo the changes, or you can use the keyboard shortcut Command Z on a Mac or Control Z on a PC. Once you've made changes to all of your individual images in this thumbnail strip, you can actually open all of them at once in Photoshop. Click on one of the images, hit Command A, Control A on a PC, and now that all of those thumbnails are selected, if I hit open, it's going to open all of those images in Adobe Photoshop. While you can do multiple images, depending on your computer's processing power and RAM, I would encourage you not to do more than five at a time. Uh, my camera raw files are pretty large, and if I do more than five at a time, it really starts to slow the computer down. That's how camera raw works and how we get our images into Photoshop.